ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Hey, how you doing? Tony Wisinski, official editor of the podcast, Redline Radio, and here he is. He's got a big sack of toys, Frankie Bergesetti. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Are, are these getting donated? Are these getting gifted? Are these being wrapped? Uh, I got a confession. It's actually just a big old sack of Miller Lite. <laughs> Get out of yeah. here. I'm just going to throw it in the fridge. Uh, my fridge broke. I didn't have a cooler that was big enough to carry it over, so I just threw it in a sack. Hey, you got to put it in a sack, and then you got to get in the fridge a little warm outside. Can I encourage you to lift with your legs and not with your back? Yeah, this is discouraging because this is prime, or it should be prime, leave stuff outside, and the outside is the refrigerator, mm-hmm. but it's warm out, so make sure you're getting the beers cold. And and as, as we talk about it getting cold and warm outside, hey, let's talk wardrobe for a f- for a moment in holiday spirit and direct people to a great place where you can get some nice wardrobe gifts brought to you by Miller Lite. Shop.MillerLite.com. I had people barging on my door. Tony, can you talk to Frankie? Can we everything go down? Mm -hmm. And uh, they were like, hey, how can we get Miller Lite merch? How can we get Miller Lite merch? Here's how you do it. Shop.MillerLite.com. Talk about it. I mean, what what an absolute phenomenal pop-up that we get this thing going so people get their hands on stuff. Miller Lite's a perfect gift to help celebrate the holidays. Tis Miller time with friends and family. Miller Lite, great taste. 96 calories. Give the gift of Miller time this holiday season by going to MillerLite.com forward slash redline to find the delivery options near you. Or you can pick up Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. Tis Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Ho, ho, ho. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Chicago sports fans. This is Barstool Carol. No Chief. White Sox fan. No Ed, Dave. Eddie. This is Redline Radio and All Gas No Break Chicago Sports Podcast brought to you by Miller Lite and Barstool Sports Chicago. I'm sorry we said off the top, no Dave. No Dave. Are you going to miss him? I feel like you've spent like a lot of time with him. Is this a nice break for you here? Honestly, it's been fine. You know, I probably logged uh... – what, 16 total hours in the car back and forth to Canton, Illinois, and then, I don't know, 10 hours here on Sunday cooking up deer meat. I have no complaints. He was he was fine. Wow. Yeah. Dave and I have known each other so long now that, you know, it's not like when you're in the car, all you have to do, <laughs> like, you don't have to talk. Like, if I, like, I was tired. I have felt no obligation to even look at him, talk to him, none of that. So it's just like you're just in the car. You're like, you're in the same car, but you're not like. Were you in the front seat? Yeah. Did you control the music? No. Oh, why though? Uh, I had no desire oh. to do it, but I I should have tried to put that to the test. But I I didn't I didn't force the issue. I didn't hmm. force the issue. I'll say. Ah, uh, Tom, interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> very inter- I thought there was like a, a I thought, like a yeah. wa- like a watertight rule. Yeah, I mean, like a very strict I also, rule. But I didn't like press the issue. So I think huh. it, if I, it's almost like I deferred. But he didn't know? look at you like you had five heads and be like, "What are you doing? Like, yeah. you should be doing this." No, he did not do that. So he plugged his own in and he played his own? Is that what you're saying? I believe it is over Bluetooth, but yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it sounds like now that Eddie's like almost, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know if vicarious is it, but there's something where like Eddie's sensing how much time you're spending with Dave. Yeah. And then I feel like Eddie's getting PTSD just about the fact <laughs> that someone <laughs> is spending that much time with Dave. You're coming off the hot dog argument. We're in the middle of the iPod thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just like, this is the sweet spot for Eddie to be terrified but around it, Dave. You, I know. And I, I definitely appreciate that if I had to argue about car who's right i mean that's part of that's part of like the white Sox dave experience like if you want to get into an argument with them <laughs> you can do it for 16 hours i didn't want to so it was one of those things where i could either talk and be in, a, in a, an argument or i could just sit here quietly and just i'm exhausted from being out in the woods all the time i think i'll just be quiet he should be like a tool for that like you know when you wake up you're like man today i just want to relax yeah like if you wake up you're like today i want to argue like it should be like, all right, we'll get a guy, and then he's like the guy that shows this, up at your front door. It's good service. Argue. Okay, yeah. get cameo on the phone. Yeah, like you get to argue with White Sox Dave, and that would be the perfect amount because you only get like thirty seconds or a minute. Okay, so you get, if you feel like wow. having an argument, Dave will pop up on your screen, and then you'll usually get to win that argument, and then the day is over. <laughs> Do you get to win that argument? Well, you know you get to win it. Dave just doesn't know. Like Dave doesn't know that he has lost the iPod argument. He he lost it for himself with his reply to Kevin today. What was his reply again? I gotta go back. And so pull we'll it go up. back to we drafted toys this week. Uh, White Sox Dave in the fifth round tried to take iPod 
uh, and that was, I think, the only time in the draft where there was controversy where it was like, that's not a toy. And so we thought this would be an easy thing because it was like iPod. Like maybe he thought iPad. This will be simple. Dave, iPads are after 2005. We were kind of, no, he meant iPod. He meant music. And now the debate has shifted to Twitter where KFC had basically said, you know, this is preposterous. They, someone said, what's the difference between drafting an Xbox as a toy and an iPod as a toy? So this is, someone said, uh, Vinny, New York, whatever, said iPod when it came out was in fact the, the gift of the year. I'm with WSD on this one. I just replied, like, was it a toy? Because that, like, no shit, it was the gift of the year. Yeah, That's it was not, in presence. We said that right. real time, too. It was a, it was a toy. And um, and Dave said, what's the difference between an iPod and an Xbox? Both are expensive electronics. One you play games on, the other you listen to music on. <laughs> I'm like, that's it. Like, that is that is the difference. One is a game that you play. The other is just like, a like why not take a record player or a CD player? Like, it's just not a toy. And I thought Kevin in real to KFC in real time uh, it was like that was the gift your parents would give to you and say, "Hey, don't fuck around with this. This is not a toy," because it wasn't. It was like a very expensive, Great point. right? And uh, and the KFC's reply to his response to me was like, "You literally just explained it. You play games on one, you don't on the other. End of it." And then Dave said something about it. He's got a two thousand dollar PC for Call of Duty, and it's just <laughs> like this year, you know, you just you yeah, can't win with that guy. Then he, now they're saying since it was sold at Toys R Us, it's a toy. That now he's well. I mean, that Jeff idea. D. Lowe had to get chime in and say this is true. It used to be sold at Toys R Us, and now is a classification. They sold a lot of things at Toys R Us. They sold fucking twenty ounce bottles of Coca Cola. I'm sure yeah. they sold chapstick. Yeah, yeah. There. They, they sold, sold lunch boxes. Yeah, are those toys? Yeah, they sold right. little fucking uh, burgers. You like those gummy burgers? Oh yeah. Oh. They the sold those. Are those Haribos? I don't know. I think they're Krabby Patty, SpongeBob. Um, How long do you anticipate the iPod argument going on for? I mean, forever because I'll never concede. Yeah. And then that's the thing. Someone hit me up. They're like, "Hey, dude!" Like, it was actually a friend of mine. They're like, "He, I like that he tried to sneak that in." It's like, no, 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 no. He was not sneaking anything in. It's not a sneak. He was like die hard. Like, no, this is. I mean, this. What th do you mean? There is a chance that this. I mean, this is going to enter the Mount Rushmore of Dave arguments with you. You think so? I think well, it's, it's, it's hot dogs. It's who controls the radio, and this is the third spot. Well, now this one isn't just against me. Like I feel like it's more. Yeah, no one owns yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, true. Even though you seem to be more on Dave's side. Well, I had iPod on my list, as, but yeah. I didn't intend on draft. If someone came in and took like CD player or something, mm -hmm. because to me, I thought iPod was just up against like it was it, an iPod came out in like 03 or maybe it was 02 and yeah. it just kind of seemed like it was outside the spirit of the toys that we were drafting but like if chief came in and was like hey I'll take a karaoke machine you know if there was some momentum in the music industry or the music you know Cat, whatever yeah. then so, I might I had iPod in the back but I it wasn't uh what was the um, I'm having I wouldn't have argued it like Dave I would have well, brought it up and been like hey what about this you know you could play snake on it but you wouldn't be arguing it for 96 hours straight after it came out <laughs> yeah, shocker so <laughs> the <laughs> only reason he has stopped is because he is currently on a flight like yeah. if, if he had proper Wi-Fi he would still be arguing with people on the internet <laughs> oh he's gonna when that plane lands the first yeah. thing he's doing and always open up Twitter and just <laughs> holding down like, the thumb until those notifications sir pop you up. have to deboard the plane well, no you, you know He's, like, wait, I got to fire off these tweets first. He's sitting on there at the edge of his seat, and the flight, poor flight attendant is probably like, well, sir, would you like some pretzels? Like, no, 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 iPod, toy or not? You know, and she's like, no, no. like, sure, I'm just trying I to give you. I fucking told you. Yeah, exactly. He's like, my fucking United flight attendant told me this. Like, you guys are fucking morons. Now, as we laugh and joke about this, can we at least agree that no one in this room has yet heard his defense about Toys R Us? I like this, the second we all see him in person, he's going to be coming barging through this door after the Christmas thing and be like, you motherfuckers. Did close, you see? Let's close the office next week. We're all remote <laughs> next week. I mean, there's definitely another round of this coming. Well, that's just funny. It's like everyone's like, oh, do the hot dog thing. Do the hot dog thing. I was like, I, sh I can't. I just can't do it. I physically can't. And he's like retweeting everyone. I was like, you're the one that's not going to admit concede defeat. I was like, whatever. Like I had, I had some. Did I read those off? I had some big time people from Vienna reach out. To no, me. you didn't tell me that. I was gonna tweet them, but I don't. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Someone, I, I got them right here. You're, but as as somebody who also consumes our content, like you're robbing me of content now. I I, I know that. I but want. I this. just. I just. I, it, 
My Can we hire explodes. a proxy for you? Can we bring Kelly in Vegas out here to like fucking... Can I get a clickbait Smiths? Like do these arguments? <laughs> yes. Someone please volunteer to be my clickbait Smiths. One guy says, WSD is wrong about Vienna. I work with the former VP of manufacturing. When you buy one at the store, you get the basic recipe. Hot dog places in places like Superdog and Bartillo's have high quality recipes. Some hot dog places have bull meat in them, which we, you will never find a normal hot dog. Wow. And so, so I mean, that. that's a checkmate. Yeah, okay, and then here's another one. What's up, Eddie? Long time stoolie here talking big cat hot glove days. Long time ago. Whoa. Um, yeah, this guy's big time. That's a fucking... I was listening to Redline today, and Dave had my blood boiling over the hot dog nonsense. My dad has been at Vienna for over 30 years. He's a director of Midwest sales for them. For lack of a better term, he's a real-life Abe Froman. If you ever want to talk hot dogs with him, uh, he'd be in. Keep up the great work. He, I love Dave, even though he has potatoes in his ears. But, you know, just I, he, he didn't have a point like the other guy. But yeah. still, he, his dad was like. Well, I think that guy has to be on Talk Walk now. The 30-year guy? The dad, yeah. I'd love to. Did you reach out to him, say that? I, I, I would love to, but, like, I just don't want to keep pushing the ball. Well, Dave doesn't have to be sitting in there. We, we can bar him from the door and then just be like, we're having a discussion about he's hot dogs gonna, and you're not he, involved. No, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's just tough because – there's no way to control the environment. You know, you could say that, but like, as soon as the guy leaves, it'll be like, what was that about? You know, he'll listen, he'll get tagged on Twitter. Yeah, like he's gonna be uh, relentless on this episode. Uh, yeah. He's gonna be, you know, I'm sure he's gonna listen, and or, you know, so it'll get back to him some way. But, do you, it's all in, uh, at least tell me you respect his conviction or his commitment to the art. Oh, I, there, this is also like the charm of him. Like, he's yeah. just like such a fucking, Bullhead, <laughs> knucklehead. Yeah, that he's. I didn't say that. <laughs> they said that. <laughs> that this is like this is also why I love him. Too. It's all, it's perseverance. Yeah, in a way. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> like guy ran a marathon. What do you think? I mean, you've been here for a little over. A no, year. I think it's just incredible <laughs> that it's like the first like White Sox Dave's not here in the twelve minutes is about White Sox Dave. <laughs> well, like exactly. he's just taking he's a over. Ride. But it, yeah. it is like when you get in these arguments with him. Well, because it's the only time we could talk about <laughs> right. it no, without right, him yeah. completely knocking the train. The perfect time to talk about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it, but he, if arguing with him is like a war of attrition. <laughs> like he won't lose. He'll say it forever without like this, conceding. He'll just wear you down. And just wear you down. So you're like, you're right. And he's worn me down. Yeah. This has become like a support group of like people who have gotten in arguments with White Sox Dave. Yeah. yeah. Just, we're all just airing it, airing it out. Yeah. You know how like some people try when you're in an argue with them, they will like intentionally move the goalposts if you have. Dave does that, but it's by accident. And it's so, <laughs> the, by That's the end, what I mean. The yeah. hot dog debate started with him. Like, ah, hot dog's a hot dog. Like they're all like, and then it turned into the various. Like, that's what I mean. It right. all, everything shifted. And it's like, no, I'm not taking the original argument because I know deep down in your heart, that's the argument. But now like you got some fucking steam in the variance. Like now he's like the poll supporters are going to go right. with that. Yeah. Um, but regardless, I hope Dave is having a good weekend uh, or good week. He's out visiting family in Tom's River, New Jersey. Uh, Taylor Ham, I'm sure he's enjoying he's, that. He's got family there? He does have family in New Jersey. I don't know if anyone. <laughs> what part of Jersey are you from? Yeah. What part of New York are you from? I have um, family in Jersey. Have you have you ever heard of a Taylor Ham? Is it a pork roll? I thought it was uh, called a pork roll. Sorry. Well, it's either or. They make them out in Jersey. Okay. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people really like them, right? You know about these, Tom? No, I haven't I haven't heard anything about okay. these. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's he, like should, a, he should probably bring some back. Maybe we can try it. Uh, he brought one back for me one time, and he ate it. He oh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he even took a picture of it going through TSA, and he's like, coming your way, and you're going to love this baby. And then, like, a month went by, I was like, hey, Dave, I'm just thinking about it now. I never got my Taylor Hand pork roll. So like, yeah, that's sorry, man. I ate it. <laughs> What? You never. He's like, I'm just gonna be honest, man. I ate it. <laughs> so that is the thing about Dave that is also endearing. So when he's arguing, okay, he just genuinely thinks he's right. But if he does finally like get through that he's wrong, he'd be like, ah, I did that wrong. I was wrong about that, or I was lying about that. Like if you call, if you were like Dave, like you're lying, he would be like, Yeah, I'm lying. <laughs> so, so it's just it's like impossible to stay mad at him. Yeah, it's funny. It's like a puppy dog. Uh, but yeah, they have those. It's like a bacon egg and cheese, but it's like a ham egg and cheese. So check those out in the East Coast if you're ever there. <laughs> Who's uh, got the microphones? <laughs> um, <coughs> fucking Dave. Yeah. Well. Uh, safe travels, happy holidays. He'll be back. Do you think we can uh, get some Taylor Hams at the new Barstool Bar? 
Uh, I want, I mean, if not up to Dave, if he's a supplier, he'll just be, you know, taking down the product. <laughs> but yeah, big news. Uh, the Barstool Bar was announced Tuesday or Monday. Yeah, in River North. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Barstool Bar. This is a Barstool Penn National thing. Mm hmm. Get some properties in some more densely populated urban markets where we have Barstool presence. I thought something was going on in Philly. Philly's coming. I think Baltimore is coming. Um, uh, Scottsdale. I mean, well, I don't know if we should say all this, but there's a bunch that are coming. Well, I'm not saying anything I haven't seen <laughs> yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. You know, because I think there's some stuff that's working on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. what about. Uh, there's other places coming though. Yeah. How can I think of off the top? Because I know I've got message about this. Anybody who's listening, you know, how do you apply or how can you. Yeah, so go to the Barcelona Chicago account, and it has everything you need right there, right? I'll pull it up right here real quick, but uh, if anyone's looking for jobs, we're looking to uh, staff our bar. So go check that out. Um, Eddie's conducting all the interviews. Yeah, DM Eddie specifically. Nope, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. He's in charge of hiring all the bartenders. Please don't do that. Careers at BarstoolRiverNorth.com. <laughs> Careers at BarstoolRiverNorth.com. <laughs> That was kind of bullshit from Tom. That was BS. That was like the old big cat. Yeah, Pete has all the Madden codes. <laughs> yeah. Well, fucking Carl did that to me once. He said I had Bang Bros uh, pass Passers. codes. <laughs> oh, I did say <laughs> that. Yeah, and like yeah, I was, I was over 100 DMs. But like, yo, dude, what's up, man? Really a big fan of Bang Bros. Like, this really help me out. <laughs> Trying to cut some other stuff out of my budget, so I had to, I had to cancel my Bang Bros. So please. Please. What's the point? Yeah, like the, qual the guys who are hitting you up for that are pretty... Someone did give me that though. That's why you said that. <laughs> yeah, there was like a, a PR company reached out to me about like. Bang, oh, that's it. Like Bang Bros Plus or something like that. They're so like, hey, would you? You know, I was like, Crack. I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, I mean, if Bang Bros Plus, Plus is putting like a new streaming channel on uh, Sling TV or something, and you had an opportunity to, to get ahead of that. Yeah, of course. Because I think, yeah, I'd say Bang Bros is one. I'd say Bang Bros is number one all time. You think so? Uh, I know Brazzers is so good. They're so maybe it was Brazzers Plus. Sorry. Okay, it yeah. was Brazzers yeah, too. It was. By the sorry. way, yeah, Brazzers yeah. has more has more themes. So it's just a different conversation for a different podcast, maybe. Yeah, it's all right. We could you know maybe draft we porn could talk stars. Yeah. I haven't heard from Porking in a while. Well, I mean, I was going to ask. Yeah, bro. I got to send him a text. I hope he's doing okay. How often do you Danny mentally check in text. on that guy? Where I'm not saying you talk to him, but you mentally you're like, oh, I think I wonder how he's doing. I always hope he's doing well. I genuinely like him. Didn't he like guy. retire from Twitter and then come back? Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen him in Twitter in a while, so he might be permanently retired. But I do have his number, so. We'll see. I hope he's doing well wherever he is. Speak. Okay, so maybe do a little reunion at the bar school bar. Is he? Tw he's twenty one. Take the train in. Come hang out with us at the bar. Are, are we doing a lot of events? Do we have any idea what we're doing with this bar? I think. Well, I think it opens in January. Mm -hmm. and I think there'll be more announcements about that. But no, I don't. I don't think we have a ton of. We don't have any plans for any events right now. But I'm sure there will be events there in the future. We should have Eddie be in charge of like you should do. When you were the president of the frat in college, you guys have like exchanges and stuff, and you guys would do like theme parties every every month. Like you should put together like an exchange list or something, or bring back some college party vibes there. Should we, yeah? Should we have a? Uh, should we all have a week being the social chair? Yeah. See who could do the best job. <laughs> I like um, that. Yeah, it's cool. It's actually it was a cool perspective from us, just you know, living here. We looked at a bunch of places. Yeah. And this has been going on since last winter, so we looked at a bunch of places, but. I think people will really like the one that we chose, or that we didn't choose it. We just gave our input. Let's be real here. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we had um, virtually nothing to do. With yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like, listen, I'm you know me, I'm far from Johnny River North. Like I, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, part of like part so much so that like early stages of this podcast, like Club Ed was a big branded joke. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. comes Eddie in the clubs. Yes, that was a big thing. But like going and see this place, it's not what you think. It's not like some. Like in you know, uh, it's not a what's douchebag the word place. I'm looking yeah, for? It's like, like it's industrial, like, uh, uh, nah, commercialized. It's, it's not yeah. like a commercialized like sports bar, like where, where you see other places. It's like actually like yeah. it's, a, yeah, it's gonna have like it. high end food. It's gonna be it's like a good location. The downstairs has like a fireplace where it's more chill. Like it's it's like a cool. It's like a place that I would hang out. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's also on the most famous stretch of bars in River North too, to the Hubbard Street from. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that in between like state and yeah, it's across from Mother Hubbard's and Al Huffett. Yep. Yeah. So. O'Callahan's, mm -hmm. Howl at the Moon, Social Twenty Five, if that's still open. 
Hmm. I should do. You could do a fucking weekly blog series on shit that happened at Social Twenty Five between 2005 and 2012. I feel like, but mm -hmm. yeah, we looked at fucking. And I think I'm just saying this because I think people would like be interested in this. We looked at Southport Lanes. Yeah, we gave that. Oh, over, well, up and down Clark Street. Southport yeah. Lanes was originally going to be like an our off, office. Our office. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So uh, we looked at the the old Redmonds. Mm -hmm. um, the old, what's the one that was a Starbucks right there by across from the Harley dealership? Oh, yeah, where you used to do the T-Box. Uh, um, it used to be all. You do T-Box tickets. O'Malley's it used to be, right? Or it used to be some type of Irish bar. It sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. But what I don't know. I just think, but yeah, this is the place. And it's the place they ended up going with. And it's, I think you guys will like it. So uh, look out for that come January. Yeah. And who knows? We might not be done. I think we're done. You think so? I do. Well, this also gives me an answer to one of the most often asked questions, which is like, hey, I'm in Chicago for the day. Like, is there a bar I should be hanging out at? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go right down here. Um, okay, sure. bullshit aside, or, you know, around town stuff aside, um, do we want to get to Jalen Johnson? Let's get to him. We had Bears Corner Jalen Johnson joins his show from Hallis Hall, he's in between meetings, and he's got a Christmas party coming up out in Fresno, California. We got in touch. We're like, "Yo, do you want to talk about your Christmas party? If you let us ask you like fucking questions about playing for the Bears." <laughs> now, this may not be like Bo Pelini sitting around having a couple beers, but I promise you, like just catching Jalen Johnson in the middle of the day in between meetings. I don't know if there's a better look at this guy's personality. So, laser focused, laser, all football, all the time. Yeah, so it was great to have Jalen on, a key piece of the Bears' defensive future from what we all hope. So um, it, it was just nice to talk to him, get to know him a little bit, and hopefully we have him again and, you know, we kind of keep keep going and we get to learn a little bit more about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good um, it. But I'm sure, you know, one thing is I'm sure Jalen enjoys some Mack Weldon. Yeah, because this is a guy obviously watching a lot of tape, obviously lives in the playbook, understanding his adjustments. And when you're doing stuff like that, you want to be comfortable. You're sitting around – house or maybe maybe you want some wardrobe flexibility something you can wear out to brunch they got you i mean it's mac weldon this they is got what the, it's all about. the ace sweatshirts the ace sweatpants the warm kit like this guy is a guy from southern california he's got to get used to bear weather and this is when bear weather really starts to kick in mac weldon's got you covered with this warm kit they have a little bit of something for everything they got shirts vests pajama pants more so just get on to uh, macweldoncom slash redline and use promo code Redline for twenty percent off. That's a that's a big nut. Twenty percent off at Mac Weldon, and uh, we wear the stuff. Dave loves the underwear. Uh, I got the warm knit stuff uh, myself, so it's great. So go to MacWeldon.com slash Redline again for that crazy crazy uh, twenty percent off your first order. So. Yeah, like they're tailoring because they know we live in a cold city. Even though today is warm, today's Wednesday was warm, but they're tailoring this for you guys to so like. Mac Weldon's looking out for you. Yep. That's nice to know. Get it. And it's going to look fashionable while you do it. So like Chief said, 20% off your first order. Visit MacWeldon.com slash Redline. Enter promo code Redline. Get it right this holiday season. Yeah, it's about time. It's about time. Let's get to Jalen Johnson. Fuck, I feel bad. I feel weird wishing. Whoosh. All right. Eddie, give me a whoosh. 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 All right, we're in the interview portion of today's show. We are joined by Bears defensive back Jalen Johnson, and I hear there's some news about a carnival, a Christmas carnival in California. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's called uh, Kevy's Winter Ball, um, and it's just my friend who I passed a few months ago. Um, just putting together an event for him just to be able to give back to the communities, the unfortunate families, and uh, we have we have a, quite a few events going on that's going to be um, taking place there in Fresno, California. We got um, we got some gifts for them. We got some groceries. We got some toys coming for each kid, some winter clothes. Um, and then I know there's going to be a food truck there giving out free food for each of the families. We're going to have some pizza and different things like that for food options. And then we're going to have a few games and arts and crafts stations. So, I mean, it's going to be a good event going down in Fresno, California, in remembrance of my best friend. And, and what day, time, like how can, uh, how can people learn more information about how they can get out to this event? Um, it was pretty much, you had to fill out a form. I know it's going down this weekend, December 18th in Fresno, California. I want to say it starts about one or two o'clock. Um, but I mean, it was pretty much, we had forms going out on social medias, um, that they were able to fill out 
and just kind of give us their request on um, different sizes, different things that their kid or the family member may have wanted for Christmas um, and different things like that. So, I mean, it's pretty much each family already has been designated and each kid has a basket that's going to be given to them and they just have a ticket. Um, so when they show up, they just yeah, everybody gets a ticket and then they get their gifts, they get their food items and then they get to go to the um the fun stations. Well, that's awesome. Sounds like a great Christmas event that you're putting together. We're big Christmas guys ourselves. I do have a little bit of a wish list at the very top of it. I need a I need a healthy I need a healthy defense, man. How how are you feeling? How's everything feeling in the locker room? How's your health? Um, my health is good, man. I mean, like I said, just coming back from treatment, just really recommit to the process each and every week and trying to stay healthy, take care of my body, um, take care of my mind as well. Um, so I mean, just trying to really stay in it as best as possible physically, mentally, emotionally, just stay within the process and keep having fun with it and keep working hard throughout the week. Um, but I mean, of course, we got some people banged up this week. We had a few DBs go down. Um, so I mean, just really being able to find guys to come in and make plays and stay healthy. I mean, is the name of the game this late on in the season. Are you like uh, beyond tired of talking about your shoulder at this point? I mean, it's just, it's always been a thing. I, and, you know, through the draft and everything, you know, obviously it's been a healthy year, which is great. But I, I imagine like just, the shoulder, just the one thing that you always feel is bothering you. I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't heard anything about my shoulder since last, se- That's last great. season. That's so, great. I mean, <laughs> That's great. Good. I about my shoulder until you mentioned it. So, I mean, you kind of broke the streak. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, no. no, I feel bad. I feel bad. Are you, you a superstitious to, guy? Do you, you want superstitions? If you want us to kick him nah. out of the room right now, we'll do it. Superstitious and luck and all that. No, no, but you know what I mean, though. It's like people early on, like they couldn't say your name without saying the shoulder. Remember that? And it was like, and then obviously. Yeah, I mean, people were finding things to talk about. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, everybody had their things that they were concerned about but I mean I wouldn't have been concerned about a shoulder considering how I played through with a hurt shoulder so I mean everybody had their own worries their own concerns and different things like that but I mean I see and they see that the shoulder was not a problem for sure not a problem is Justin Jefferson gonna know that it's not a problem this weekend too is this is this how you kind of stay focused every week it seems like as the season goes along you have matchups every week you know you had the cardinals then you got mm-hmm. Devonte adams in town or against Devonte adams now it's just justin jefferson is that like are you trying to measure yourself against these top guys oh yeah i mean shit i think that i want to be a top guy um so i mean i have to go against the best to be considered one of the best i have to be able to limit their production i got to be able to make plays against the best if i want to consider myself one of the best um and i mean that just comes with the job and i mean at the end of the day i feel like i've been doing that at a pretty high level considering how many wide receiver ones I've been going against each and every week being out on an island by myself being able to limit those guys' production and different things like that. So, I mean, I'm definitely excited each and every week to try to find out who's that number one and then go in and watch film and prepare um, and then just be prepared for that matchup. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I know he's a great, great player um, and I feel that I am too. So, I mean, we're just going to go in, we're going to battle, we're going to compete um, and we're going to see what happens after that. You know, when you came in, a big, big thing about you is this guy likes challenges. This guy's very competitive. This guy wants to be, you know, the very top of, of what he does. And so I'm curious, though, as the seasons progress and stuff, like, you know, obviously playoffs not in the mix this year. It's a lot of noise outside the organization. What are some of the things you're doing outside of these matchups to challenge yourself as you're going to these games? Because to be fair, you know, I mean, the motivation has to be what? Play to play? I mean, for me, I tell myself every day and every week, I mean, I play for pride and respect at the end of the day. Um, my name's out there each and every each and every week. If I give up a big play, it's not the Chicago Bears, it's Jalen Johnson. It's my name. It's my last name out there. It's my my career, my resume is out there at the end of the day. So, I mean, when all else fails, if things aren't going right, all the chatter's going in, I tune all that out and I just um, worry about having pride and playing the right way and playing good football and then gaining guys' respect, being able to make plays and know that I'm one of the top DBs in the league. John, how much did the Bears' uh, DB room change when Kyle Fuller left from last year to this year? How much did it change? (sighs) Honestly, I don't think it changed too much. I mean, just, of course, missing that presence, but there's definitely nobody that can fill that role that he has filled for the last seven years with the Bears that he had throughout his career. Um, Just the impact that he had around the facility, had on that room, had on the coaches, um, that definitely can never be replaced. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we all kept a professional mindset, and that's one of the biggest things that we say in the DB room is being a pro. 
Um, so, I mean, just really being able to work together, being able to figure out how we can fill that gap, what needs to be done, where who needs to pick what up. Um, and I thought that started with me, um, being able to really come in and take over that CB1 role as a leader, as a playmaker, as um, being just that number one guy, being able to shadow receivers. So, I mean, just really being able to fulfill what what he left. And how, how much have you benefited from being able to match up against Allen Robinson in practice or, or maybe a Darnell Mooney over the years? I mean, definitely. I mean, just being able to battle against those two good receivers. I mean, those guys are really good. A. Rob been doing it for a very long time, and he runs really good routes, has good releases. So, I mean, just being able to see the high level um, of receiver play across from me and practice throughout camp and different things like that has definitely um, propelled me to be ready um, in these moments like this. I mean, there's nothing that I haven't necessarily seen um going throughout the weeks and playing different receivers i mean we have speed we have those shifty guys so i mean there's definitely a lot of looks that i've seen in practice that haven't surprised me or anything like that in the game defensively up front obviously there's some, some monsters you know roquan Mac kicks are you continually impressed by those guys or are you like hey this is their dogs this is what they do I mean, it's a norm for me. I mean, I came in and I haven't seen anything less than those guys playing at a high level and being elite. And like you said, just being those dogs and just monsters out on the field and just having that presence out there has been a norm for me because that's all I've ever seen. That's all I've ever been around, being in the locker room and playing out there next to them on the field. Well, I mean, it's got to be at least intimidating the first week when you walk in and Khalil Mack's like, hey, what's up, man? Like, you better be fucking good at your job because I'm good at mine. <laughs> nah, I mean, not for me. Cause, I mean, shit, I put that pressure on myself regardless. <laughs> I mean, it ain't it, – it's not like that. I mean, I play the game each and every day to be one of those guys and be one of those monsters next to them. So, I mean, there's no pressure that they put or that they're – that that's out there that I don't already put on myself. All right, let's stay real confident for a second. What's the dumbest thing a quarterback can do when you're on the field? When you what's what's like when you're out there, you're like this this motherfucker would be so stupid to test me like this. What does that look like to you? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's tough. What would be the dumbest thing? I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even think about things like that. Uh, will be the dumbest thing. I mean, nah, any decision that they make wouldn't be done on my part. I want to make plays. So, <laughs> How about well, it? You, you said your yeah. your your hometown is Fresno. You ended up at Utah. Who's in the? I'm fascinated by Utah. I don't understand how they keep getting players, keep getting good. They're in the they're in a New Year's Six Bowl again. What went into your decision to leave California, which is filled with you know D1 programs with tradition, and go to a place like Utah? <sighs> Honestly, I feel like that that trend started, and I think I would honestly say that I sparked that trend just because if you go to Utah and you see what's actually in that school, what's in that locker room, the coaches that they have, you can see that it's not about the flash. It's not about the jerseys and the Nike and the Jordan and the pretty weather and all that type of stuff that people may go to UCLA's or USC's for. Um, I mean, you really get to – be coached by great guys, um, great coaching. And I thought that's what you told all about, honestly, is about pride, about playing tough, about being physical um, and being disciplined. Um, because I feel like that's all they've been able to rely on. They haven't had too many four and five stars previously in the past until a few years ago. And then once I committed, then Jack Tuttle, he was a four or five star. And then just more and more guys started really seeing what you can get out of being disciplined and having going through that process of, commitment and just being in that facility being in that city and being in that town um so i mean just really being able to focus on what's important um and i mean for me all the flash and all that wasn't important all the college lifestyle that wasn't important to me it was about playing ball getting my degree um and getting to the nfl so i mean i feel like a lot of guys are starting to see that utah can give you a really good opportunity um but i mean utah is not for everybody at the end of the day i mean people go to their best fit but i mean i feel like utah fit me in my plan that i wanted to achieve really good what's the uh what's the morale been like in the building um obviously not the not the season any of us had hoped for so is it seem kind of downtrodden or is it what's it like over there i mean you have a little bit of both you have the side of the locker room that is starting to go into the tank and you have the guys that are still trying to fight and figure out how we can get better um i mean at the end of the day that's that's the name of the game just trying to get better each and every week 
Um, and then just really being able to put four quarters of football together. I mean, it's not about one quarter being good at some times and at moments, but really being able to figure out how we can be good for four quarters and find ways to win football games. But, I mean, you definitely have the ups and downs in the locker room as expected, but just being able to keep as many guys as we can together and keep fighting for wins. So speaking of the four-quarter game, you really limited Devonta Adams in the first half of that game. He had almost nothing, and then he obviously exploded in the second half. What what changed? Uh, what adjustments did you see from them, or or what happened that let him kind of go off in the second half? Because you had him completely handcuffed, bottled up in the first half. Um, just where they started positioning him at. He did a lot of his damage in the slot, um, moving him around in motion. Um, just their game plan was totally different with him in the second half. Um, just really trying to find out ways to get him the ball in different facets. Um, so I mean, just I mean, just really coming out with different ways to get him the ball, whether it was pick routes, whether it was play action, moving him behind the line of scrimmage, uh, putting him in the slot, motioning him around. Um, because I mean, like you said, on the outside, it was limited production. So I mean, just really being able to find different ways to be able to get him a ball, and it worked in their favor. What's the um, you know you said you just said before that you know some guys kind of go on the downtrodden route. Like, what is it like for you? Obviously, you and Roquan, two key pieces, two young pieces that are you know you're locked up for a couple more years here too. Obviously, like, where have you seen this as like a, a younger like a youth uprising? Like, are you guys trying to kind of reel this in because you guys know you're going to be here? How does that work? Honestly, for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I try to just do my part um, and kind of worry about myself. I feel like when you get out of your circle, when you get out of your bubble, and you start trying to do too much and different things like that. I, I've seen that not go in the right direction. So, I mean, for me, I'm really just trying to be one guy to lead by example. Um, cause, I mean, it's easy to be a raw rock guy and walk around here trying to get people riled up. And, I mean, I think that we're all grown men. Um, and if you're not motivated to come in and play and motivated to get better and to work, um, and take on the challenges that come each and every week. And, I mean, there ain't nothing that I can tell you. Um, but, I mean, I just try to do my part and keep my head down and keep working, keep taking on every challenge that I get every week. Um, so when that time does come where I do need to speak up, they know that I've led by example and that I've earned the right to speak. Yeah, I mean, that's that's put perfectly, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like that's something everybody should be thinking. When, you, what, when you're on the field, how much are you putting onus on the – D line and make pressure for you to be able to be in a position to make plays or you know is there ever a time you're coming on the sideline you're looking at the safeties and you're like damn we you know we can't get to the quarterback and that's impacting us what is that relationship like between you and the defensive line as a, as a DB I mean me personally I don't really even get caught up in that I realize or I think about it more so after the game like dang we didn't get too much pressure or he was kind of sitting back there comfortable but in the moment I'm worried about myself or how I can play tighter coverage or different things like that, what went wrong with me personally. So, I mean, in the in the moment, I don't do anything but lift those guys up and, I mean, just hype them up and tell them to get some pressure. But, I mean, when it comes to coming off the field and different things like that, I never open my mouth to tell them guys anything because I don't know what's going on down there. So, I mean, it's definitely something that I, I'll just try to focus on myself in that moment. Um, but then after I go and I see some pressure, I may have some conversation and think or ask some of those guys or ask other people like, what was going on where I wasn't there any pressure. But in that moment, I definitely don't I don't I don't step out of my lane and go and ask those guys or try to harp on those guys about pressure. You're a pretty competitive guy. Do you get a little mouthy on the field? Do you like talking trash? And, and is there a guy in the division that you like to match up with the most because you guys get to chirp back and forth at each other? No, nah, I don't do too much talking. I don't no. think talking with anybody any, any any good. So I mean, I keep my my words and my thoughts to myself. I mean, if somebody has something to say to me, then I definitely won't think twice to speak back. Mm -hmm. But I know I don't engage, and too many people don't engage in trash talking to me. I do my job, and that's it. Come on, what about what about other deep? Do you get like mad that people say corners can't tackle? Like, is there some part of that where you look around, and you're like, man, I wish we had more pride as corners. We were good tacklers. Nah, I, don't know. I feel like guys have different things that they're good at. You see those DBs that are good at tackling and not good at covering. You have those guys that can cover but don't want to tackle or can't tackle. I mean, you see have the ball hawks um, that get interceptions. I mean, everybody has their things that that they're good at, that their strengths. So, I mean, I don't I don't pay attention to that. I know my strength is being able to cover, um, and then that's all I focus on. So we we had another podcast this week. Talking about toys, what was the best toy to get on Christmas? You had the toy going, uh, the toy drive going out in Fresno. What was your like mm -hmm. best gift that you remember getting as a kid that you got hyped up about? My best gift—that's a tough one. 
best gift. I'll probably say a Nerf gun. Nerf gun. That was a high draft pick yeah. for us. Yeah, very <laughs> high draft pick. We like the Nerf. Yeah. Crazy because I found it in my uh, – my parents were trying to hide it, and I searched the whole house and ended up finding it, so I knew I was getting it before Christmas. <laughs> that's always the best you got to sneak around yeah uh well jalen thanks for jumping on man i am now terrified uh i hope your shoulder like stays in or else i'm going to be getting killed because i brought that up so i hope oh, i no. wasn't the jinx no no i believe in god i ain't worried about no jinx in it look <laughs> no curses and, and if people wanted to donate to i got it right here actually okay. it's uh, ecf dot network for good dot com you could donate for uh, Kevy's vision project. Well, thanks, Jalen. Uh, obviously, big supporters of you. Um, good luck the rest of the way. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. There you have it, Jalen Johnson, getting ready for Monday Night Football. Guy's fucking serious. Oh yeah, no, you know, not the most electric guy we've had on the show. But listen, that's what like I really like what he said. He's like, no, nah, man. Like if I'm ever asked at a time to. Uh, you know, where I got to speak, I'm going to do it, but I got to worry about me. I got to get this cornerback thing down, right? He's only a second year player. Like, he's, I, I do like that about him. This is a guy who you want playing, mm -hmm. you know, that's the kind of focus you want on your team. Yeah, so, I'd be much more nervous if he came in and he was like, Yeah, here, you know what? I like talking shit to fucking who's that bum on the Lions? He yeah, sucks. Yeah, 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 Fuck yeah. that motherfucker from the right. That's a little like, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Dion, Dion's in the news. He was a mouthy guy. Corners are known as mouthy guys, not Jalen. Jalen is like, I got a little bit worried that Belichick will listen to that interview because that guy <laughs> is a just do your job guy. Yeah, like he's a do your job guy, and he does his job very, very well. Yeah, so it was, it, it was nice to talk to him. It really was. Mm -hmm. it sounds like it's a great uh, event going on in Fresno, in California. So go check that out if you're around. There's a lot of Bear fans out there, or donate if you can. Yeah, yeah, that'd be it. nice too. So we could show a sign of love and support because it's like he we did make a trade here, so it's like mm -hmm. we can throw him a little love. That'd yeah. be great. Yep. No, definitely. So it was. It was uh, it was good to talk to him. I wish I could have gotten more to understand, like, like in August training camp, and you were going up and getting reps against Justin Fields, and like even if he didn't know the offense, like how did that? I want to know sincerely how Justin Fields stacked up that time period when it was Dalton was the number one job. I don't know whose perspective you'd get that or when we'd able to get it, but like an actual sincere because he's the one going up against the receivers. Yeah. And, I, th I don't know who would have a better perspective of who he'd rather compete ball against. Ball placement, yeah. ball coming out on time, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it'd be, be interesting to hear that. But mm -hmm. uh, Bears aside, like we said, Monday Night Football, Ed, do you have any like um, advice for people that are still holding on? Or No, I just think we we just have to gut it out because it's, it's four games left and – I mean, it really is unfortunate. It seems like so many. Yeah, it's and and but it, it's 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 weirdly in a better spot though, right? Because the, the it's so mediocre. Like people, teams fighting for that last playoff spot, and it's like us, the Seahawks, and the Lions, and like the Giants, who are just dead. It's it's kind of just given where it's at in the team and how we need to overhaul a GM and head coach. Like at least we're there. Like at least we're not in a situation where like everyone's like frustrated with each other because one guy wants this one guy thinks that better i think they're finally all on the same page right or i could be wrong. no i mean i think the incompetence has unified the city is that what you're getting yeah at? Like, like, like everyone's like just done with it like everyone's so tired of it and it's like hey like it's time to start over and everyone realizes that and uh unfortunately yeah that's with that's just with getting rid of matt Nagy and ryan pace so yeah um you know there was something that uh i don't think any of these things on their own really mean that much these like independent reports or something but when you see them kind of like trickle out and stack up there was another one that ted phillips a chicago sun times article this morning or tribune article this morning kind of a deep dive about uh ted phillips is like significantly more ready or has been ready for the last couple of months to get completely away from football operations. So that was a report today from the Thank trip. fucking God. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, you know, and we said this off camera or off mic, whatever, about Jalen and, you know, like I wonder how he feels about like if there's if there's pride in that room about being a bear. And, and it was we were talking about based on that comment, he said like half the room was kind of eh and then the other half is just trying to get better. When was the last time a guy had a lot of pride about being a bear because it's been Trestman, Fox, now this regime. It's been, you know, we might be talking about a decade where you're like, what it means that's to That's a like, problem. You know, like, yeah, it's, I mean, it, there was a year in 18, and that's what, like, I. But that was know. a blip. Oh, yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. 
I mean, I love Akeem Hicks and it's you know and got you know and, and Roquan and some of these guys, but it just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like the lovey days where guys yeah, are like you know we're I'm a Chicago Bear. Yeah, well, as you see those guys in the post game, you see Olin, you see yeah, uh, yeah. Alex Brown, you see um, Briggs, and like you you really feel it from them. And right, you're right. I mean, it's a good point. So that needs to come back, dude. And I hope. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna be interested. Like they, it st- should still be a pretty good crowd Monday night, right? Yeah, I think maybe mm-hmm. just because with the holidays coming up, and if you bought tickets for this anyways, it's still a uh, the tailgate scene for a Monday night game in Chicago yeah. is still gonna be great. Mm-hmm. Well, that was still like one of like that year where they it was it was 18. They're good, but the, the Joel Quenville doing the shot ski and like it, it's almost like the tailgate has become a bigger thing than the Bears. You know, in recent years, like just go, like just go and have a good time, and people still show up. So, but it sucks. It sucks right now. Yeah, Vikings still have a lot to play for too. Like I yeah. said, remember when I said that two weeks ago? I, was like, I know. It's fucking, like that's so Vikings. Like I'd be so frustrated because they wallop the, the the Steelers. Steelers came back later, but you know it was. Dalvin Cook went off. Yeah, yeah. he's coming off. Of an, I think he had a couple, a little bit of a rest. That that could be a a, a terrifying matchup because if the bear, you know, if they. All you need is like two or three guys on defense to be just like a little bit checked out for a guy like Dalvin Cook to just absolutely fucking murder you. Yeah, um, I'm. I feel like I'm in a place mentally where I can't be disappointed or hurt. You know, like if like it's a good spot. You know, though. like when was that? What if was they that lose game by forty? Though? Like I don't care. Well, there was a game recently though where that was the case, and they still somehow. Disappointed us. When was it? I'm, I'm trying to go look at the schedule. Do you I feel I'm like about? was it the Cardinal game? No, the Ravens. No, maybe it was. Yes, it was the Ravens. Yes, the, Ravens yeah. game was the one where it's like, oh, you were sad about. You were, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was the all time, like you know, the meme. Like our expectations were low, but holy fuck. Well, it's because that lost Ravens to, was somehow they lost to Jalen's guy, Huntley, the Utah yeah. guy, who is what he thrown like twelve career passes yeah. before that game. Uh-huh. So yeah, so shit like that can get worse. So, um, I mean, the Bears have. They've lost seven of eight. Yeah, with the only win being against the Lions. Yeah, sneakily. Seven of eight they've lost. With the only win being on Thanksgiving. I mean, you could argue the only good win they had this year is the Raiders. Yeah, and the, I mean, the Bengals, I, I'm like stunned by them. But like I said about the AFC North. Because the Bengals, they looked like shit against us and they got hot for a little bit. Now they, they're kind of. And the, who are the Raiders, too? So Yeah. Well, uh, at least. There's one other thing I had on the list because we put it together. We did a rundown um, for Wednesday. Maybe you're just finding out about this for the first time. Go check that out. Also, call back to our other episode this week. I don't think we did. The Tommy Reese interview is just fucking incredible. That's been going around. That's our Tuesday episode. Obviously, go check that out if you haven't. That seems to be uh, very well received. But there's, yeah. I put together a list of Christmas songs for the rundown. We didn't get to it. Oh, did you? I didn't know. Where, did you want to? Who wanted to talk about Christmas songs on the rundown? No, that was just that's just like a suggestion that the uh, rundown producer Nick Fristoli gives us. So. Okay, well that's a ter- uh, Winter Wonderland by the Renettes. Go check that one out. So. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, Tommy Reese. Sorry, well, quick note. You, it's like if you're a college football fan, or even if you're in the area and you don't like Notre Dame, like you still want to be knowledgeable about what's going on, and you'll have like some. You can apply it to yes, any major exactly program. So. Yeah. And, you know, and it's like we – I know Tommy a little bit, and uh, I wouldn't say, like, we're friends, but, like, we – you know, we're, like, text buddies, and I think that – and he's met Carl before. And, and have you met him before, Ed? No. I, I think it that comes through. Like, it's always better when we have a guest where he – like, they just feel comfortable on, like, more of a friend level. And that I think that came through, and he kind of let it rip as if he was, you know, sitting at the bar with, you know, with us and you guys in the audience, and it was – I thought it came off very well, so it was very, like it was. I felt like I got an education on how college football really works. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you got anything else, Ed? No, I mean it's like a weird time right now. The, our, yeah. our two winter teams are in COVID protocol. Uh, Hawks are playing tonight. Are they? Okay, yeah, they sorry, got the, they got the cap. That. We're recording on Wednesday. They play the Capitals. Um, so the re, like Calgary, the Calgary game on Monday got canceled because Calgary didn't want to cross the border with a bunch of guys and then have issues getting back if they had COVID outbreaks further. So that's why they canceled that game. The game tonight is on, um, you know, but it is, it's just, 
you just wish that they didn't dig themselves such a hole under Colleton because they're not fun to watch, but they, they're playing very well. Like, they're playing very solid defense. They just have no good players on offense. Like, they, they just have no – like, Seth Jones is the leading scorer, which is great as a defenseman, but you'd rather have it be Kane driving the play, and he's not really producing that much. DeBrinket's been a little bit, you know, same thing. Uh, but Taves is getting it going a little bit. Kubelik had a goal against Toronto. But it's just like the hole, and you, you lose, you know, the first – what is it? What's, what, Carl, you're the math guy. What's, um, what's 11 out of 82? I like 82? how you looked at me and you looked right away. What's, yeah, that? That what's 11 out of what? What percentage is 11 out of 82? Uh, 12 and a half, 14, yeah, something, 15, something like that? Over probably 14.2%. 14. .2%. 14 you, you, you throw away 14.2% of your season. It's just too much of a hole to climb out of. But they're – to me, they're still worth watching because they're they at least they play hard, which is not something you could say in the past, and you couldn't even say it in October. Thirteen point four, so directionally correct by Carl, and uh, but yeah, I think I think you know it'll take a miracle, but they're and they're playing a good team tonight. The Capitals are probably going to get smoked, um, but they're they're trying hard. They're trying their best. They just don't have good players. That's what it is. <laughs> That's so depressing. But it's like kind of, you know, if you put it against the Bulls, or not the Bulls, the Bears rather, where it's like at least the culture is still strong. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they have – and they have like that group of defensemen who are, you know, with Jones going to be there a while, Murphy's going to be there a while, McCabe's going to be there a while. So, like that's the building block of that. You mean Stillman too. Ian Mitchell's been up and down. He's going to be around. So they have like these guys that are, you know, the next kind of – if the Hawks get good again in the next four or five years, like those guys will, will probably be a part of that team. And so it's nice to know that they at least have a strong culture um, to build on. They just need more talented players, especially you know up front. So, but it's it's going to be you know kind of a kind of a long road to hoe here the rest of the way. Yep. What about what about you, Carl? You got anything? No, just my Illinois team. I hope they you know pick it up. We'll get, we'll get back to National Signing Day too. Illinois, I got a kid from Denmark. I, I don't know the first thing about him <laughs> technically, but I just like having a kid from Denmark. Seven feet? Football. Football. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Football. So, and shout yeah. out Jack Lausch for getting a full scholarship to play quarterback at Northwestern. Crazy. That's Good awesome. And I was talking to the baseball coach at Northwestern. He's, you know, over the moon excited. He's like, dude, I wasn't, you know. <laughs> he got recruited big to go to Notre Dame and do baseball, baseball and walk yeah. on a – football team and he's like I, never in a thousand years is he sitting there thinking because because he, he's supposed to be like a top five round draft pick and yeah. could be higher depending on mm -hmm. spring season and weather if he gets a chance to play a full season and stuff so i love those examples i can't think of one but i know there is like a, a clear cut like a guy who just backed his way into like peyton manning you know what i mean yeah those are all like uh like Zach Taylor backing into Joe Burrow. It's something uh, that's not the example, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was like, yeah, I just, you know, I got this guy. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of a good example. But um, they're there out one. there. They're yeah. definitely out there. I'm sure Tony Gwynn on a baseball team at San Diego State's a good one because he was like an all conference point guard and was there to fuck people up in basketball. And then he's like, yeah, I'll show up on the baseball field. And then turns out to be one of the greatest hitter for, hitters for average of all time. Do you admire Tony Gwynn? Um, I watched a two-minute video recently of him explaining the two most important things to hit, and I had never heard him before in my entire – like synchronized the way he explained it. I have a funny, quick Tony Gwynn bit. He played at San Diego State and then obviously played for the Padres, and then when he retired, he took over the San Diego State baseball program, and I played summer ball with a guy who was on the team when he was running it. And Tony Gwynn would sit behind an L screen behind the home plate while live scrimmage was going on, and he would just coach the hitter while the pitcher was. And he just talked to the hitter. And invariably throughout the week, he'd get really frustrated, and he would just get out behind the L screen. He'd say, all right, you sit behind the L screen. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Full fucking scrimmage. San Diego State, the pitchers are throwing 90, 92. Obviously, we're talking Tony Gwynn, but this is like Tony Gwynn, fat, retired, old. old. Yeah. And he would get out, get out of his chair, get off his stool, get in the batter's box, be like, "You go sit behind the L screen," and then he'd say, "I'm telling, I'm telling you, I want you to stay on the ball and hit it the other way," and he'd say, "All right, keep it going. Wouldn't put a helmet on, nothing. Just take the kid's bat," and they'd have the pitcher resume, and he said, "Without whatever the pitch was, the next pitch, he would just fucking boom." If I want you to go the other way, he'd say, "All right, get in the box." 
you sit behind the L screen and first pitch he'd hit it the other way. And he'd say, all right, now you get be, you get back in the box. I want to see you do it again. So Matt, the pitcher would say, I'd be on the mound, and all of a sudden Tony Gwynn would call time, and then he'd get in the box. It's like, all right, now i got to throw a pitch to Tony fucking Gwynn. Like, do you know how intimidating that is? Without a doubt, he was the best player for his, like, anywhere he went his whole life. Yeah. Imagine something so difficult being so effortless. Oh, it's crazy. Those guys, like, I don't know how they do it. There was that old story about Pete Rose, too, where he was, I think he was at an All-Star game or something, he was just taking BP, and someone, like, asked him why he had this white tape around the barrel of his bat, and he's like, what are you talking about? And and it was his bat, like, he had just hit the ball in the exact same spot yeah. of the barrel every single time to the point that it, it wiped off the paint on his bat in that one spot. So, like, he was hitting the sweet spot every single time, the exact same spot on the back because he just had that much yeah. back control. He's just a freak of nature. Those guys are great. Yeah. And I don't know. Baseball is losing those guys. I don't know how we got in this fucking Tony Gwynn. Now I'm all serious. Baseball. Yeah. It is sad, though. What are you looking at, Ed? I appreciate it. I'm trying to find a better example. We talked about him earlier on the rundown. Would Steve Kerr apply? Like, he got pretty lucky, like, getting that Warriors job. Yeah, oh right. yeah, yeah. You know. that's a good point. And then it's like, oh, you have Steph, you have Clay. What about? I mean, Phil fucking Jackson walked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got. But then again, Doug Collins like it didn't work. So mm -hmm. it's a good point. I don't know. I don't even want to say goodbye till I get one of these things. Hold on. You know what I mean, though. Like, there's examples of this where it's like, oh, I just. How'd you get this job? I said, well, I, you know. I caught a, uh, a kickball in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Ten exactly. years later, yeah. I'm you know, yeah, hosting like, well, a show with Dave Portnoy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, Michael Beasley, he came to Kansas State. And yeah. That kind of was the building block. But whatever, that was from the uh, the Laos conversation. Mm -hmm. I saw that they're retiring Io's number. Yeah. Uh, that? How do you feel about six? that? It's a little quick. And it could be like a recruiting thing up front. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was a special player, though. I mean, he was an All American. Yeah, he's in the same realm as, but but they didn't go. They didn't do anything. Yeah, you know, because are all the are the big three from the 05 team all retired? And I don't believe so. I don't. Okay, know. like I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I feel like Luther Head should have his jersey retired before Io. But it's tough because Underwood recruited Io. Io was this All American. Now Io's in the NBA, mm -hmm. and Underwood's still there. Now, if you take that and you apply that to Bruce Weber, Bruce Weber is probably your textbook fucking example. Bruce Weber yeah, walked in Illinois, yeah. and here's D. Brown, Luther Head, and Darren Great Williams. I mean, that's the best one. Full yeah. circle. <laughs> that honestly might be the one I'm looking for. That is the one. But and then they ran happens, Bruce Weber yes. out of town. It happens with college coaches frequently. It's like, oh, he got, you know, how lucky did he have? But like, there's definitely a good college example that I'm blanking out on that like came into like a like a revolutionary quarterback. You know? But yeah, they didn't see it. Fuck Ed. I'm sorry to do this. I don't mean to. Well, we're just going to get some great submissions, and hopefully we can compile them into, a, into an yes. exhaustive mm -hmm. blog. Um, anybody got plans? Anything Anything else? Go check out the Barstool Bar. Go check out the Jalen Johnson charity. Mm -hmm. Go check out the Tommy Reese interview. And I, I should say uh, Tevin Jenkins. I, I haven't seen a uh, an injury report on um, – I, I had a bad brain today. Who's our big left tackle? Jason Peters. Yeah. So Tevin Jenkins, like that's definitely worth keeping an eye on, as well as Justin Fields. And, I you saw know, something that future, they were future, actually going to put Borum at left and Jenkins at right. This that's week. fine. Yeah. Something. If that's where they're meant to be. Winter Wonderland, the Renettes. Winter Wonderland. Is that what you said before too? Yeah. Okay. What did I say? No, Winter Wonderland with the Renettes. It okay. has a yeah, great yeah, intro. Yeah. They build up the percussion. I still think Darlene Love's the best. Oh, no, Darlene yeah. Love Christmas? Christmas. Or Dar yeah, yes. I mean, that's the number one. Okay, all of right. all we time. are in agreement on that, yeah. Um, the Bulls are in town Christmas. Mm -hmm. U2 has a good version. U2? U2. Yeah. Mm. Really? You big U2 guy? Uh, as a kid, I was, because my dad was really into him, so it was just like constantly in the, in the car CD. <laughs> I feel like every every dad of that age... Like you're an Irish dad, you love you too. Oh yeah, yeah, and Bond. religious. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. One of the great toy bands of all time, because when you buy when you bought an iPod for like six years, <laughs> you two you two just oh, had we, like a our, fucking. Our the, dad one year got us all the U two iPods. 
The one that had yeah, the preloaded. Dude, they loaded onto the phone one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, people still aren't over that. It's yeah, crazy. Nobody asked for that. Let's be clear about that. The One of the problems with that was that when you would plug it into your phone, or into your car, rather, you know how your phone would- Yeah, like, just oh, automatically start playing it over my car speakers. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. It's like they- like Their least celebrated album, too. Get, at right. least give me the fucking Joshua tree. Know, but right. it, just, it just shows how ungrateful fucking assholes we all are. Like, Apple's probably like, this will be great. A nice just added bonus, like Bono. a free album. Delete this And everyone's shit. just mad that they got something for free that really doesn't affect them. No, yeah. Fuck us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But- I mean, Ed, don't make me make a red Ed joke. You can criticize Apple every now and then. I do. They unilaterally made a decision to play U2 for you without even consulting you. It's a personal thing. Music choice is personal. Ed was, or Tom was very upset his concert got canceled last night. Yeah, did you see also I made a, a Spike Christmas playlist once I saw Chiefs? Can I, can I confess something? Yeah. Dante asked me to make that like maybe three weeks ago. And I forgot, and then he texted me, so I just went through and like made it quickly. Um, yeah, so you, I, I didn't, and I think that was clear. You could tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was like seven songs. It's you, what it was twenty one. I gave him a list of twenty one. Oh, I I thought it was way less than that. Maybe, maybe he. I don't know. I gave him a list of twenty one, but I retweeted your response yeah. because it Thank it was you. warranted. <laughs> All right, thanks. What yeah. was his response? He he came. He did his own like. Uh, his own playlist and I'm like well this is a good playlist too so retweet nice yeah I wanted to help out the Barcel backstage you definitely playlist did. you definitely for you did. guys yeah <laughs> all right we'll be back next Tuesday only one show next week don't complain about it. it's holiday time right I mean just like just give us a, you know we'll give, yeah. you, we'll give you a great Christmas show next week great holiday show until uh, everybody be safe all gas no breaks DJ play that shit <laughs> thank you <Mom. laughs>